everybody welcome or welcome back to the september mix podcast so today i am attempting a tutorial for these knitted scrunchies that i made so i don't think i'm very qualified <laughs> to make tutorials about knitting but it is quite a quick and easy project and a few of you guys have requested that I make a tutorial about them. So I did my best and hopefully I'm going to be as clear and concise as possible. So for a little bit of background information, um, I made three different kinds of scrunchies in the sense that I use different kinds of yarn and a different number of stitches. So they all pretty much have the same construction but a few things varied. Let me know if you would like an, a different video and kind of more funky <laughs> kinds of scrunchies, more creative. But for now, um, I really like these that I made and in my opinion they're just the perfect kind of gift for Christmas, for a birthday or whatever celebration you might have. An additional benefit is that you can use your well, yarn remains, I guess, any kind of spare part of a ball of yarn that you need to use. These take close to no yarn at all. When I used, uh, I think, DK weight, I used 25 grams of wool, so that is just half a ball. And if you're knitting one with mohair or any other thinner yarn, you need even less. So that is a perfect project to just use your leftovers and not waste anything while making something that is super pretty and super useful. I made, as I was saying, three different kinds of scrunchies. The first one is with kind of thicker yarn. These two are knit using Drops Netball. So this is um, 75 meters or 82 yards per 50 grams and those are the scrunchies that I used only 25 um, grams of wool to make which is just half of a ball so that is great um, also all of these scrunchies took me about less than an hour um, each of them <laughs> not all of them but these are a very quick project for a last minute gift for example. The second kind is a blend of two fingering weights or one fingering and one lace. This is one strand of drops alpaca like this um, which is 50 grams for 167 meters so bordering on sport weight and one yarn one strand of kit silk mohair. Is it going to focus? I think it looks super pretty and just the finishing touch of the little kind of braid uh, looks super sweet to me. The third kind is just one strand of brushed alpaca silk, um, always by drops. This uses close to no yarn, that is crazy. <laughs> so hope you like the video and let's get to it. First of all, you're going to need some yarn. Here I'm showing you the different kinds of yarn that I use that are all leftovers from different projects. Then some elastic. You can either use some normal elastics like I'm showing you or some elastic band that you're going to cut and some stitch markers. So here is the first kind of scrunchie I'm showing you today, a DK weight chunky scrunchie that is so fast to net up just because the yarn is a bit thicker and I love using it to make big buns or ponytails. For this, you're going to need some DK weight yarn. Here I used some drops, napple in this mustardy color. You're also going to need some 5.5 millimeter needle in a 40 centimeters length. Here I used 30 and it worked fine. I just didn't have the right length of cable on hand. I'm making my little knot and I will cast on from 70 to 90 stitches. You get to decide how big you want your scrunchie. For this one, I think I cast on 90 stitches. So I'm just casting on and casting on. And I try not to 
uh, make my stitches too tight. So here you can see me all done and I'm going to be very careful not to twist my row because we're going to be joining in the round and you don't want to have to undo everything because you weren't careful not to twist um, when you joined in the round. So I'm going to put a little stitch marker here before joining in the round so I know where the beginning of the round is. All good. And I'm just knitting away. The first stitch is always a little bit complicated, but that's fine. So here I am just knitting in the round. Really, you want to knit, knit, knit until you have a certain length that you're comfortable with. You're going to see what I mean in just a moment. So I'm just knitting all my stitches, as you can see, not too tight. And I'm just knitting away. And here you can see I am done. I think I knit about eight centimeters long the width and here I am grabbing an elastic and I'm measuring 23 centimeters because I'm going to tie a knot by hand. If you want to sew your elastic you're probably going to need a little less length so I would say 21 centimeters. So you can see that I'm making a knot it doesn't really matter if you twist your elastic when you're making this knot because it's going to be hidden it's not really going to change anything. So I really try to pull it tight so that it stays in place and doesn't untie itself. So here you can see me turning my work around. I want to be able to see the wrong side of my work to put my elastic in because we're going to join the cast on edge with our live stitches on the needle and our elastic will be in the middle. So for that I like to pull my cable together so that it's easier for me to arrange the elastic. So you can see me doing that, arranging it so it doesn't fall off. Now I am grabbing my tail from when I first cast on my stitches and I'm going to try to align it with the first stitch of my row. So I am tying actually a big knot, well not that big but a knot, on my tail from when I cast on so that it's extra secure. Here I'm working the last stitch on my needle. Here I am, and you're at the stitch marker that you can just remove. Now, this is when I'm trying to align the where I first started casting on with my first stitch after this, the stitch marker that I just removed. So this is kind of the tricky part. You want to grab the stitch that is furthest away from you on the cast on edge. So this is going to be way clearer a bit further in the video where I zoomed in but I'm trying to grab the, fur the stitch furthest away from me and knit it with the first stitch on after my stitch marker. So you, here you can see me do it again. It can be a little bit tricky to see what you're doing but it becomes easier afterwards and it's not a big deal if it's not perfect, it's not really going to show anyway. So then I'm also binding off at the same time. So basically I take my stitch, as you can see, take the stitch furthest away from me, only one stitch, knitting them together and binding off. Okay, so hopefully this angle makes it a little easier to see. So I'm showing you the stitch furthest away from me on my cast on edge. I grab my stitch on my needle, my active stitch, with the stitch on my cast on edge that is furthest away from me and I knit them together. Here you can see I have two stitches on my right needle and I'm going to pass my first stitch on my second stitch in order to bind off. 
Here I'm doing it again, first stitch on my needle, stitch on my cast on edge, knitting them together and binding off. So you don't want to make your binding too tight and it will create this kind of braid looking edge on your scrunchie that I find very cute personally. Okay, so as you can see I'm always being careful to have my elastic in the middle because you always want to knit around your elastic. Grabbing the stitch, the stitch away from me, the most away from me and binding off. I'm showing you over and over because I know this can be complicated so I hope that you're seeing things correctly. If you don't manage to grab the right stitch uh, it's not a big deal. I don't think it will appear. So here you can see I have binded off already a big part of my scrunchie and it looks like that while you're working on it. It might look a bit tricky but once you're doing it you get to really understand what you're doing and here I am arriving at the end of my scrunchie. So this is the tricky part because it gets quite difficult to see which stitches you're grabbing and you, oh you can see my needle actually slipped from my stitches. That's not a big deal, just if you're struggling take a big breath and you're going to manage just fine. It's not a big deal if there are a few holes. So now I'm done and what I'm doing is I'm just stuffing my little cast on tail from the beginning when I cast on inside of my scrunchie and I'm helping with my needle to just put it inside. That's just one less end you will have to weave in at the end. So here I'm putting my needle back and you can see even I am struggling with that. <laughs> it's fine, It's it will just work fine. So here I gave up on trying to keep my needle on my stitch, well my stitch on my needle, so I just grab all my stitches on the same needle and I try to guesstimate which stitch I have to work and you can see I'm just knitting them together. You can go very slowly so that you're sure you're making the right moves and here I'm binding off my very last stitch. Here it is and I'm just going to pull the yarn and this is the end I'm going to have to weave in with a needle. So here you can see it's all finished and I'm just threading my needle with my yarn and I'm going to kind of try to fix the little holes that I might have left uh, in my fabric and just try to make it as aesthetic as possible. It's not a big deal if it's not perfect. It's going to be on your wrist, it's going to be in your hair, so really nobody's going to be able to see anything. Also, I'm not the best at sewing, <laughs> so bear with me if you are, but I'm trying just to fill in the gaps, kind of, and make it seem as if um, it's not where I started my knitting, although it was. So you just want to weave in your end so that it doesn't unravel and it's as secure as possible and when you're done you're just going to cut your end very close to your scrunchie and you're all done. Don't worry if you didn't quite catch everything that I did, the next examples of scrunchie are basically finished in the same way so you're going to be able to understand perfectly what I meant. And we're all done with the DK scrunchies. For our second scrunchie, I knit this one smaller and it's perfect for a half updo. So I used one strand of alpaca by Drops in this lovely lavender color and another strand of kid silk, always by Drops. So I'm tying my little knot, making sure I have enough yarn to cast on as many stitches as I want. For this one I used 40 centimeters long needles, circular needles, and uh, it's a 5 millimeter needle. And I am going to cast on a hundred stitches. Once I'm done casting on 
my stitches. I make sure my row isn't twisted so I can join in the round. And I grab a stitch marker, I put it at the beginning of the round, and I just knit. You can see the first stitch is always a bit tricky. And I just knit in the round, knit, 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 until I have my width that I want. So for this one, I knitted a little less because I knit for, I think, 6 or 6.5 centimeters. Here you can see I am all done. A little change of background. <laughs> and I am knitting the two last stitches on my row. I'm at my stitch marker that I can just remove. Here you can see I'm grabbing some elastic. It's going to be a little bit of a smaller scrunchie, so I'm actually measuring less length of elastic. I'm grabbing 21 centimeters. So I cut it and tie it in the round. Here you can see I've already put my elastic on the wrong side of my work. I grab the tail from my cast on edge and I will do exactly the same thing as for the DK. If you want more detail, go back in the video from where when I was knitting on the DK scrunchie and I align my first stitch after my marker that I've just removed with as close as I can get to my tail from when I started casting on. So here you can see I'm kind of struggling. The first stitch, I think I made a little mistake but that's not a big deal. I'm going to fix it later. So a bit more of a zoom grabbing the stitch that is furthest away from me on my cast on edge. So here I'm showing you the stitch that is closest and this is the stitch that is furthest away on the cast on edge. So these are the two stitches I want on my needle and I knit them together. Here I'm binding off the stitch on my needle, active stitch, stitch furthest away knit them together and binding off. All right, so I hope that you got what I was trying to show you. I always do the same thing all around my scrunchie and I just bind off at the same time which gives us a lovely finishing touch to the scrunchie. So I try as always to not be too tight in my bind off. Here you can see what I've already worked and yeah, here I'm showing you that the elastic kind of can slip off um, from where I placed it earlier. That's no big deal. Just make sure that your elastic is always in the middle so you don't end up having to rip things off later on. So here you can see the lovely little braid the elastic and here I am almost done. I have a few stitches left on my needle. As you can see just two stitches left and the tricky part as always with the needle slipping, you saw it in my DK weight scrunchie, this is the same. So I just try to guesstimate which stitch on my cast on edge I need to grab. It's not a problem if you make a few mistakes and here I am actually not binding off right away because it's easier for me to bind off afterwards like I'm going to show you. Here I was struggling to find the right stitch, decided on this one and here I am left with the stitches I need to bind off so I just grab my first stitch on my needle, pass it over my second stitch. I'm sorry that I kind of moved my scrunchie, you can't really see much, but here I am binding off the last stitch. I just pull the yarn through, cut it at a sufficient length for me to weave it in. I am threading my needle and I will just try to kind of filling the little gaps that I made from when I first started binding off and joining the two 
uh, ends of my fabric and when I finished when it was difficult to see the stitches so I tried to kind of sew in V shape so that it kind of mimics the nice um, braided edge but I'm not the best so uh, once again <laughs> that's fine I try to not make it too tight and to just kind of fluff the fabric as I am going here I sped up the video so you don't have to endure watching me weaving my ends in I cut my thread and I am all done so you can see it is the same construction as the DK weight scrunchie this is the last scrunchie I want to show you very fluffy brushed alpaca or you could also use mohair scrunchie so for me I used one strand of brushed alpaca silk by drops and I grabbed enough length to do my long tail cast on I cast on using 3.5 millimeters needles and they're always 40 centimeters long and I cast on about a hundred stitches you could do more or less depending on the size of scrunchie that you want so as always I just cast on my stitches be careful to not twist your row so that you can just join in the round so I put my stitch marker in to know my beginning of the round and I will just knit away this scrunchie I chose to make it in the middle size wise um, of the two previous scrunchies I showed you so I think I knit for about seven centimeters but you can just fold your fabric in half um, and you will be able to see the width of your scrunchie and you can knit more or less um, depending on what you like so here I'm just getting rid of my stitch marker that I don't need anymore and I try not to drop any stitches while I just put my fabric inside out as I'm doing here to be able to place my elastic so here you can see me pulling the fabric inside out so I want to be able to see the wrong side of my fabric and I grab my elastic I used a normal kind of elastic for this one so I don't exactly know how much it measures but that's just a regular kind that you can find in any store I pull my cable kind of together so it's easier for me to place my elastic now I skipped part of the process and I will just join my two ends so my active stitches on my needle with my cast on end just how I showed you in the two previous scrunchies so as always knitting the stitches together this is kind of a more difficult fabric because um, it is very fluffy if you're using brushed alpaca silk or kid silk uh, so moha uh, it's very fluffy you're not going to be able to see as clearly but here you can see I've almost finished um, bringing my two ends together and closing my scrunchie here I am just tying a little knot on my tail from my cast on edge so it's secure and I am left with just one stitch oh I'm at I've actually already binded off all right so I decided to edit this a little bit shorter because you've already seen the process in the two last stitches so here you can see me threading my needle I am weaving my end in trying to fill in any gaps that I might have left the big advantage with fluffy fabrics when you're using brush alpaca or mohair is that you can't really tell anything if you make a mistake so I cut my yarn and and we're all done with this fluffy scrunchie we're now all done with the three scrunchies so I really hope you found this video understandable useful and that you enjoyed it it was actually my first ever time recording a tutorial and making a voiceover so I hope that went as well as possible um, I had a lot of fun making it. It took me a lot of time, but <laughs> that was definitely fun. Uh, if you like the video, 
don't forget to subscribe and if you want to post your very own scrunchie on Instagram, please tag me in the photo. I would love seeing your version of it. So yeah, thank you for watching once again. Have a lovely rest of the day and see you very soon. Bye!